an example, and well, very well known example of the on the distribution protocol in 1991 due to, to uh, So this picture, the kind of gray area, this is where all operations that Alice performs will be located, and the white area is where uh, both operations will be located. So first, they, uh, uh, as you know, they both share an entangled quantum resource. They both perform measurements in a random member of a family of complementary bases. And if they pick, if it so happens that they pick the same same member, then uh, transfer information occurs. So uh, here they can see that they share an angle quantum research, and this is so far exactly the same as in the monitor category, category approach. Um, but further, they perform a choice of, of random bases. So as you can see, they both create cylinders um, of uh, classical information, uh, and uh, this, uh, this corresponds to the choice of um, choice of bases. And this choice of bases that actually influence the measurement operation that they perform. So um, over here, um, you can see that the quantum quantum system is transformed into classical information, uh, and the, the choice of measurement that you perform is influenced by another block classical information. So you can see the blue, blue information, this will be the, the basic information over here, and the red information, this is the, the key information. So both of them perform the same, the same operation. Uh, and then later in the protocol, what they do is they compare their basic information. Uh, so this is the operation, operation over here. Um, and um, um, yeah, so I already said that um, um, well, the vertical composition can uh, uh, be interpreted as composition in time. But as horizontal composition, as you can see over here, could be interpreted as spatial composition. So area uh, analysis operations happen over here, and both operations happen over here. So and this horizontal composition of two cells. Um, and also a very important point that I want to make is that actually. Um, um, when we, so now we're talking about abstract syntax, so when we, when we choose semantics in which to interpret the syntax, uh, what we're essentially doing is we are uh, picking a physical theory in which we want to, which we want to work. So what you could do in, in, in the theory is to pick uh, your favorite physical theory, then create a category that uh, captures the, the nature of this physical theory, and then later interpret the pictures in that theory. So what we're doing over here is we're interpreting them in, uh, in total. Uh, so we're, um, implicitly what we're doing is we're and um, choosing, uh, well, we're assigning uh, a world type, uh, world type choice of uh, zero, uh, one, and two cells into the, uh, the abstract syntax. Um, and, uh, yeah, as I said, time flows, flows upwards. Um, so, so far, there's nothing really uh, special about, about um, the description of this quantum key description protocol. Uh, in fact, we could have just chosen any, uh, any basis, the same basis that are mutually um, complementary. Uh, and complementary complementarity only enters the picture when, uh, well, when the mortal cryptographical enemy of Robinalis enters the picture. So here comes Eve, uh, and what Eve does is she captures the uh, quantum channel between Alice and Bob. She uh, chooses the basis of random because this is as good as she as she can do. And um, she me measures the measures the channel. Then she copies her result. So she retains or oh, over here is red red transformation. She retains a copy of the of the result. And then she uses uh, the other copy to create a fake system that she sends back to the default so that she can go undetected. Um, so, um, um, so this completes the description of the steps that are taken within the, within the protocol. Uh, but um, well, the point I want to make at this, uh, this moment is also that um, there is another very well known implementation of, uh, of quantum key distribution, namely BD84. And uh, well, the relation between the two is very, is very well known. But in this, Formalism uh, is actually um, well, uh, more explicitly visible because the um, description of uh, uh, BB84 is topologically equivalent to the screen that you know Um Yes. Uh, so then, in terms of the uh, desired effect that with this procedure to have this, uh, there are basically two possibilities. So either E could be successful in guessing the uh, basis that Alice and Bob use, or she could, be, uh, she could be unsuccessful. If she is successful, then um, she learns the key information that Alice and Bob had, and she goes undetected. So this is symbolized by this three-fold distribution of, uh, of key information between Alice, Bob, and uh, Eve. And because she, she guessed uh, correctly, so her basic information is the same as Alice and Bob, that's kind of information, so this is symbolized by the, by the blue piece of this kind of information. Uh, if she, however, is unsuccessful, then um, she, um, the, um, there will be no uh, classical correlation between 
uh, their key information will be of strong correlation between their basic information. Uh, however, to be, uh, to be entirely precise, there actually will be some important correlation to account for that we need to include a global phase that will depend on all those pools of classified information. So uh, this is a, a, a unitary, unitary to sum. Um, so uh, yeah, so this completes the description of QKD, uh, QKD equations. So now we want to uh, adopt a more abstract point of view and think about complementarity in general, what it, what it, what it actually means. Uh, so uh, what we're doing over here is we're performing measurements in two, uh, two successive measurements in two different bases. So the blue uh, regions of classical information they correspond to the shades of bases. Um, and, uh, and measurements are performed over here. Uh, so, um, um, and so what we want to, what we want to achieve is we want the two results of, um, of measurements, we want them to be, to be uncorrelated. Uh, so this is symbolized by, by this picture. But uh, again, uh, well, we have to account for some uh, correlation, so we will introduce a, a unitary, unitary phase, global phase. So uh, what's also worth noting at this point is that if we fix that basis, and if we didn't freely choose from a, from a, from a family of, um, uh, of bases, um, then this can be shown to be equivalent to the uh, Kukai and Duncan uh, complementarity condition. So you can find that in Jamie's um, high quantum theory paper. Um, so this is the uh, abstract uh, definition of uh, family of control. Um, uh, for a family of control operations to be, to be complementary, uh, so we need an existence of a of, of like that. Uh, by, but why, actually, why this is uh, significant? So uh, what can also be shown is that um, this control complementary equation is topologically equivalent to the QKD equation that I presented on the previous slide, uh, and uh, uh, that will be achieved via a series of uh, uh, topology preserving two scale, two -scale operations. Um, so uh, yeah, so what's uh, significant? What's the point of all of that? So uh, the, the most important thing is that this is a uh, uh, completely syntactic proof of the equivalence between um, quantum key distribution and usage of mutually unbiased spaces. Uh, so we, uh, at any point, we don't really make any reference to the underlying Hilbert phase structure. Uh, so uh, we only use the, um, the logical abstract syntax that we uh, that we introduced and. Um, um, also, as Mernish uh, said, I in the paper we also analyze other protocols. So, uh, among other, uh, the, so, so we talk about means uh, problem, which is much well known, and that's why I decided to stick with quantum distribution and uh, future directions. Well, so we see application to other application of these methods to other quantum protocols and uh, uh, non-standard classical models. So, for instance, you could uh, devise a, a, a two category and in some sense capture uh, classical computation. Uh, so Jamie and I made an attempt to do that with group works, uh, group reactions, and uh, response of natural natural numbers, uh, and then uh, interpret the diagrams in um, uh, in that category, and then possibly gain some uh, further additional insights into, into, into the classical world as well. Okay. Thanks a lot. your first line when you say we have less equations here than, for example, the monoid approach. I, I think it's not So, uh, no, what I'm claiming is that all the um, you know, additional um, equations are already built into the categorical structure, so they are obviously present, uh, but uh, since uh, you, I mean, you're using them already because of the categorical structure. And, and my second comment is, pictures are, of course, very beautiful, but Everything you showed has already been done in the monoidal approach, and I don't see any advantage here. The only difference is that you have to draw tubes instead of wires, which is a lot. So, uh, arguably, the, uh, the, uh, what is made more explicit is the flow, the flow of classical, classical information. No, I think a wire is more explicit than a tube. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. Are well, the tubes for classical Yes. Yeah. They don't exist in the monoidal No, no, they exist. The wires are not. No, no, they were. Yes, no, they were. See, that's why Frobenius also got been introduced. Those are the classical flows. That's correct. Uh, yes. <laughs> okay, can I ask the next speaker to come? Okay, thank you again.